Matt with CustomCarGrills.com here. In this video I'm going to show you an installation we did for a Dodge Dakota. The first thing to take note of is the hood latch release up here on the upper passenger side. To remove the factory bars I'm using a fine tooth handsaw. Try to remove as much of the bar as you can by getting close to the edge. This will minimize the amount of work you'll need to do later with sanding. Sometimes these type of bars will require you to saw at different angles, or in some cases you might also have better results by trying to remove the bars from behind the grill as well. I repeated this step for all four openings, so now we have a relatively clean slate to work with. Now it's time to even out the inner edge of this. I'm going to use two different sandpapers, one coarse and one fine. The coarse sandpaper worked really well for removing any excess part of the bars. While working on the sanding, I did notice some tabs that I missed the first time. These will likely need to be removed, so I'm going to go ahead and saw these off as well. Once I removed the tabs, I went ahead and used the fine sandpaper to scuff up the outer edge of the entire grill shell. For this project, I am putting on one coat of sandable primer that bonds very well to the plastic grill shell that we're working with. Next, I'm going to put on a thick base coat of black. For this specific project, what I'm going to try to end up with is a textured flat black. For this, I want the mesh and the grill shell to be the same color, so I'm not going to do the final paint job until I have the mesh installed. Now that the base coat has dried, I'm fairly satisfied with the coverage, and I'm going to go ahead and start installing the mesh. In this project, I'm going to use a sheet of our perforated hexagon aluminum grill mesh. The basic premise is, is I'm going to take the mesh and put it on from behind the openings, cut each piece individually, and wrap the excess around the opening itself. The first step to do this will simply be to cut the sheet into quarters since there's four openings. I'm simply just using a silver marker to outline roughly where I need to cut this sheet. The first cut will simply be right up the center of the sheet, so this way we'll have a left and a right side of the mesh to work with. And then with each left and right side, simply cut those in half so that we'll have a top and a bottom now to work with. All of these pieces are going to be a little bit oversized for what we're going to want to work with. I'm going to go ahead and mark off a slightly more refined outline, also taking note of where some of the tabs are that may become troublesome later on. Now I'm just going to cut along the line that I had drawn out. In this project I'm just using a basic pair of tin snips to work through this material. It's relatively easy and quick to cut through. The parts that I marked off for the tabs, I'm going to get in there with what they call either a wire nipper or sometimes an end cutter is what it's called. The first thing to do here is just to cut some lines going up towards where the tab would be and then use the end cutter and notch out where the tab actually is. When using this tool you'll need to be very precise. Any slight miscalculation on the tab and you could end up with a gap showing through the front. With the way that we're going to install this grill, some of the corners of the grill mesh piece that we cut out are going to need to be notched. The reason that I'm doing this is to prevent any sort of bunching up when we fold the excess part of the mesh on the back side of this opening. Just like with the notches that we made for the tabs, try not to overcut here. Again, you don't want any gaps showing through the front. Overall, it looks like I got the right shape and size for this project. Now it's time to try to mold the material on the back of this opening. I'm going to start on the inner part here, and as you can see, this material folds in relatively easy and molds pretty quick to uh, the shape that I want to conform it to. The sides and the bottom worked out pretty good for me. For the top section though, I'm going to use a sheet metal tool in order to get a really nice solid bend all the way across the top of it. Since that's a very flat specific shape, I want to make sure that that's perfect in this case. With this tool, I'm simply clamping on and bending where I'd previously drawn out the line where the flat edge is. Once I'm done, this should just slide right onto the back of the opening. 
I'm hoping that it's going to be a good fit, and it looks like I did a pretty good job in this case. After repeating that same process for the other three openings, I do still need to make a hood latch cutout. I'm just going to draw again with the silver marker, kind of a rough outline of where I think it should be. In this case, I originally drew a semicircle and ended up going with a square cutout. Now it's time to affix the grill mesh to the grill shell itself. In this installation, I'm going to be using an adhesive. The first part of it is simply to loosely tie down the mesh to the grill shell. In order to do this, I'm just going to use some simple cable ties and run them around the grill shell and through the mesh. This will give a loose hold just to kind of keep them in place for now. You can use other methods of securing the grill mesh on. Some people like using clamps or weights in order to keep the mesh on while they use an adhesive, but I like using the ties because it gives me a lot more precision. And now I'm going to flip it back over to the front and in order to protect part of the paint job that we've got started here, I'm going to insert some little pieces of foam in between the ties and the bumper before we fully tighten the ties down. If you miss this step, sometimes you can damage the finish on the grill shell itself. A lot of people will over tighten the ties and it'll start to kind of dig into either the plastic or the paint itself. Flipping it back over to the back of the grill, I think we're ready to do the adhesive installation. The basic premise of this is we're going to just draw a bead of adhesive around the perimeter of the mesh. The adhesive that I prefer using is Automotive Goop. It dries relatively quick and it dries clear, but most importantly it's a really nice strong bond, but it's not too strong to the point where it's brittle. It's actually got quite a bit of flex to it, and that's very important when you're doing any sort of long-term installation on a vehicle. You want something that's going to be a nice tough bond, but you also need it to have some flex. If you use an adhesive that is too strong, it ends up being brittle, and you'll see it crack later on, and will likely end up coming off, or you'll start seeing gaps, or it'll become loose at, at some point. This particular adhesive takes about a day to fully cure. So I came back after about 24 hours, and now I'm just going to remove the cable ties as well as remove the foam. After removing the ties and the foam, I did notice that I had over tightened some spots on this. Thankfully, it's not the final finish that we were going for. Now it's time to put the final coat on. And as you can see here, the gloss is now completely gone and uh, we're left with a very stylish new flat black. There were some spots that did not come out very consistent and I'm going to try and fix that later before the final installation. I brought this back in though in order to put a little piece of rubber trim on the hood latch cut out in order to protect your fingers when you're when you're opening the hood. And now here's the final installation on this customer's vehicle. The flat black grill blends in very nice with the dark gray vehicle color. And the new honeycomb mesh is offering a bit more protection than what the factory grill did. I hope you like what you saw and if you have any questions feel free to email me.